cool. Welcome back. Today we are going to actually be working a little bit more with scriptable objects. We're going to try to implement a nice pattern with scriptable object variables, which I'm hoping is going to be interesting. Let's get started first with making a variables folder here and here we're gonna start with um, something called a float variable and this is going to be a scriptable object I don't need any of these. What we need What we need is this uh, for variable script of object, right? So we're gonna start with simple. Um, um, it's actually a float, right? We're trying to here. So we have public float that captures a value. We need some functions here. Void. Uh, have a public void set value and here it's going to be pretty straightforward with the value equals to value right pretty straightforward and then a few different versions of this Set the value from a different float variable and in this case value is value dot value right pretty straightforward which is accessing the value from a different float variable and then have something different here So this can be a generic function to add, subtract, um, change um, anything here. Basically, just add and subtract but because we don't want to call it add with a negative value or subtract with a positive value we're just going to say apply change it's a little bit more confusing um, but keep things generic and much like the above we have the same but with a float variable here where Now with this, should have a very, very basic float variable here. See why it's complaining. Okay, we're gonna put in the variables namespace. Okay. Cool. Let's handle there. Um, let me see. Hmm. Yeah, I don't 
don't pass it. Uh, like that was gonna get confusing. Yeah, we'll do that for now. Um, here and that should allow us to change everything cool better sticking a little bit better with uh, our naming conventions here cool now we're gonna move to a different one should be we're gonna call Float reference. This is going to be an interesting one. You're going to see real soon what this one is about. Like the last time, we're going to use uh, namespace, and this actually doesn't derive from anything, it's just a float reference. Uh, and it's a serializable. Class. So we actually don't need Unity Engine either. Cool, for this one we are going to have a few things. Here we start with a use constant. So the whole thing about the float reference is that we're going to be able to use either what we just set up as a float variable, or we're going to be able to just use a simple float constant. Right, so we start with the float constant here. So I have these three things. Then an yeah, empty constructor. And then we have a different constructor that has an initial value. So if we initialize the float reference with a value, just gonna set it to use a constant by default and then set the value uh, in the constructor. Then we have the um, property here. So we have a value property here. Constant and then finally static implicit operator float. Okay, cool. So this is uh, going to be just a general operator that we're defining here so we can compare one reference to another reference. Uh, 
here. Cool. Should be everything that we need for this class. And now I'm gonna have one last cool thing. Actually, before we go into that, very quickly for the for variable, I want to change it a little bit. Now we have the other. We're changing a little bit the create menu so you can actually come here and say create scriptable object variables float we'll see if it gets too nested in here we might you know, actually bring that out here into its own menu but for now i'll be here and the one thing we want to add which is kind of cool something called a float reference drawer this is gonna be cool because this is gonna be actually modifying the editor and change the namespace and then this is going to be a proper drawer And we will call this a custom property drawer type of and a float reference. So this is going to be a way of drawing the float reference in the editor so it's a little bit easier to use. For these, we want to start with um, with only string array of uh, pop-up options straightforward is uh, is constant or use variable Just keep this clean. All right. So we have these both options here. Cool. Now we also need a GUI style. called pop-up style this we're gonna use to style the pop-up options that we have up there mm -hmm. and then this is the on GUI variable here from the property drawer you have all the stuff here all right, we're gonna leave the base here for now, but we're probably gonna have to remove that later. Uh, so, if uh, style is null, then have a new GUI style. Skin, get style, and all these main options. Cool. We're just using some um, defaults here from the from the editor. Not a lot to say. Then 
image position is going to be image position dot image only. Okay, we're not gonna dive too deep into a different editor properties because we'll be here forever. Um, then we have label. It's going to be Mr. GUI Begin property position label and property. All right, and then position Mr. GUI. Prefix label and then position label. We're resetting basically where these things live. Now if I have that set up, we can begin change check. Cool. I'm gonna get the properties here. This is something called a serialized property. It's constant. Cool. This is a little bit brittle, as you probably noticed, because this is using a string reference to the property here. So we need to be very careful that when we're using our float reference that we keep in mind these three things that we want to access. It's not going to give us an error if I spell it wrong. Now we have the three properties that we care about for the float reference. And then we have some more work to do. So I need to figure out where to put um, the button that we're going to use to select between using a constant and using a variable. So I need a rect. Position. This is already given by uh, the by the call here on ongoing, and then we need to set some properties here. So we're pushing the, the Y to the top margin of our style. Um, then setting the width of the button here that we're gonna use you'll see in a minute how it looks and then finally uh, we're just redefining the position of the button 
on the x side uh, to be the size of the bottom. It's gonna just push whatever is in that container a little bit to the right. Cool, and then we need to do a little bit of a hack here. Here we're gonna need to mess around with the internal indent that the editor uses, just for a tiny bit. So we store the indent set zero. Doing some cool stuff. Actually, creating the pop up uh, from the bottom rect. It looks weird, but here we're actually creating the pop-up using the, the button that we created before. And then depending on whether we're using constant or not, setting a flag there. Uh, for us, we can see here. Uh, yeah, basically we're setting up what the display options are going to be. Uh, I know the selected index here. Uh, yeah, you can see here. Selected so like index is going to be depending on whether we're using a constant or not because we want to see a change in the index there when we select a different one. Cool. So now. We update the use constant button depending on what's happening in the in the pop-up. And then I create the field here. This is gonna be the actual field where we put the the float or the constant. Um, so I'm break that down. Depending on whether uh, we're using the constant or not. We use constant value for the variable. And non. Uh, so we're not going to be using a label here. So we just say no. And that should be it. Yeah, it can look better. And what else do we have left? Well, we the signal that we're done. So if we're done here, then Once we are, once we have changed everything that we need to change, then we just serialize the change and apply it back to the object. So I, you can see here we go back a little bit, right? So here we're saying, hey, like, look out for any changes, right? In case we change from bool, uh, from using a constant to a variable. Then we set up the properties. We add some elements to be able to check um, you know, any changes here. And then if we end up making any changes, then we actually apply them back to the property. So if we switch from using a constant to a variable that will actually uh, show up in the float, float reference at this point. And now that we're done with that, we can undo 
the intent level hack that we did before and And the property here, and we don't need the base because we're doing all the things. So woof, that's that's definitely uh, a big quest here. But yeah, we should technically have everything that we need. So one thing that I want to change with this float variable. It will be very cool if it's actually working. Let's go to our uh, scriptable objects here. We can set our variables here. And I actually want to create a variable here. That's going to be float. We're going to call this um, Inventory base capacity. Something that we're going to be changing soon. Consider this to a variable. Cool. So now we do have an inventory here. And I'm going to change this base capacity to be a float variable. So let's go back to the inventory we were working on before and then instead of this here we're gonna create uh, for now we're just gonna comment that out and oh yeah we're gonna need to make this a float uh, because it needs to be a float okay so now we have base capacity i see no big uh, complaint here so we do have base capacity here. and you can see here now we have use constant or use variable so we're going to use a variable and we're going to add here our inventory base capacity but I need to log this down inventory base capacity bam goes there so now of course we can change uh, this here but the cool thing is that whenever we're in game mode or anything we can actually come here and change the base capacity on the fly at runtime and then it will still work which is really cool you can actually see that here uh, for now let's see if this complaint it should actually run because it was running before but let's just try it yeah it's going to complain because i don't have the headset plugged in so I cannot initialize any VR SDK, but we can see here that we have base capacity here uh, set up at 20. And if we go to our variables and change base capacity to 10, we're going to see a couple of things here, right? Nothing changes here for now because we're not re reinitializing anything yet. Um, but if we go out of play mode, we can actually see that the inventory capacity remains at 10. And when we play again, we should see max item capacity updates to 10. Because we have, um, if you remember, we have max item capacity here being set at base capacity whenever it's enabled which happens when we're running the game. Cool. Let's return that to 20. And now we have a nice variable system. So let's stop here. Thank you. See you next time.